Okay, so the folks who are going out will greet Jackie out there. And uh, meanwhile, we want to get started. So um, I'm going to give hand over the microphone to Art. At some point, he may be asking for questions, and Jane has the other microphone. So thank you, Art, and thank you, Jay, for being here. Thank you, Carol. Namaste. I had the good fortune of uh, having an angel hug this morning. Angel has left, but she did give me a hug, and I hope you all get one today. This is a, a great time because in the transition program, there's been two things happening, and the board has directed a great search with a transition team to have a new minister coming. Beside that, there was some planning that was going on with a strategic plan initiative that the board put in motion last spring. So in talking about that, we have a little presentation that starts off with an affirmation of who we are. We all know who we are, but we like to affirm it. We do every Sunday. And we're probably going to have some technical nuances that we have to be flexible about. Okay, come on, baby. Come. Okay, Jay may become the technician. Okay. <laughs> Share a little bit of why we're here, as well as to understand how we will shine in the future. We are all shining now. How are we going to shine and shine even brighter in the future? So, we know who we are. We say it every Sunday. We're going to say it again because affirming that we are a spiritual community that celebrates the presence in all and delights the divinity to its divinity. Fantastic. Now, there's two words that really have a fundamental foundation. Vibrant, the vibrations that Jackie spoke about, and spiritual, and the vibrations that we have are spiritual. And that leads to the truth that we've all been able to learn here at Unity. And that truth has lit a spirit light in each of us that you carry out here. When you're smiling, your spirit light shines through. And that light is, allows us to realize a vision. And the vision statement that we say every Sunday is what we believe in. So we're right now affirming our vision that we are centered in love, we joyously create a world of oneness, peace, and harmony. And I am going to say co-create is very important as we all work together because you are us, we are you. Um, in other words, when, from another perspective, when you think about our individual in, inner light and that coming together, it really does serve as a beacon. So think about a beacon of light and how that allows us to serve as a guide to others. Because we do want everyone to share what we experience and to experience what we share. Looking forward, there's a 2020 vision that's been put in place for a couple of years. There was a TE process that allowed a lot of good thought to clarify core values, intentions, and this vision statement. So today we're gonna to say for the first time, this vision statement for 2020. Unity on the River is a welcoming, prospering center of oneness, filled with beings of spiritual maturity, high consciousness, and expansive living light. That sound, is that powerful? A number of significant words in that. And the whole picture that that creates is powerful. So how do we realize that vision? What have we been doing in terms of planning? Well, it's because realizing that depends upon leadership. And we are really richly blessed because we have a new leader coming on board. It also is planning and participation. But for the, let me try it. <laughs> 
So, and we're, we are fortunate. The transition team and the board of trustees worked very diligently. And when you think we, what we went through, so they deserve a round of applause for everything they did. So in a few weeks, we are going to be blessed with Ogan coming on board to provide another aspect of leadership to complement all of what the board has done in the interim, and we're fortunate. From a planning point of view, we established a steering committee of seven individuals, I happen to be one of them, of people that are really committed to having us realize that vision. And the steering committee, in turn, established teams. We created five teams of areas that we wanted to focus on in going forward. The first is how we're organized, how we operate, and the systems needed to actualize that vision. The second thing is marketing and communications to have our word way beyond what it has been. And needless to say, finance is very important, guarding the funds that we have and making sure they're allocated to in the proper location, to the proper cause, so that we again will be prosperous, as it says in that vision statement. Building and grounds, you know, the building and grounds, are, they're protecting the asset that we have, and they've been doing great work, and now we've got a little more of a plan going forward on how to continue to protect those assets. And lastly, an events program. Looking at things that we can do from an events program point of view to enhance what we have, because we've got a great portfolio, but there's more that can be done in the future. So with respect to the plan and process that came out of that, if you really think about, it's not going to happen overnight. It's not going to just happen in the next six months. It's been, you know, five months of planning. Now we've got to do the work. And that work is about a three-step process. This year, what we're doing is focusing on the solidifying the base, making sure that everything that we have in place is rock solid, because there's no sense in building a lot on top of a shaky base. And fortunately, the spiritual foundation of this entity, this spiritual center, is fantastic. It's really, really, we do have a beacon of light. So with that foundation in place, the next thing is build participation so we can reach out further. We have many people committed. We want more. And the third phase is to really build sustainability so that we can continue beyond this period. That will allow us to realize that 2020 vision, but it's going forward that counts. And one of the most common things that people have said is that, we need to be more well-known. More people need to be aware of us. That's embedded in this plan. And Jay is going to speak about this from the marketing point of view. Thank you, everybody. Um, I'm just fortunate to be here to be able to give service to Unity. I'm, I'm grateful for it. I thank you all for coming. Um, so from... <laughs> thank you. From the marketing perspective, we, we were thinking about our goals and we're putting together a plan to present to the board and the trustees um, with regards to meeting that two, 2020 marketing and um, vision statement. And what we're going to do is start with what we've came to realize is that Unity wanted to be recognized as in, in <laughs> an, an inviting, enriching spiritual center that Locally, regionally, and nationally, and, and that is to be a spiritual beacon of light to our region. And each and every one of us is a light within us, I want to say, and we are all part of that beacon, and that's what we're going to continue to talk about today. <laughs> Our marketing focus is, is to reach out to the broader community as a beacon of light. Yeah. And so as you're currently reaching out, we want to work with that and make that more, make that a brighter beacon. Our approach? 
keep going. No, no, keep talking. I need to know this. So it is building on who we are and what we are is, as this creative spiritual center. Well, each one of us is a beacon of light that reaches out to your community. And somehow you're reaching out to the people within your worlds, within your communities, and within your, your own environment. And so what we want to do is work with that, build that more, and have you become more of a message to that community that you work with. And then what we have is we have a creative center here that will allow us to be able to bring the people that we meet, people that we have for programs, for services, for a great music. Um, I mean, it's a big event when we come to a thing, and, and it's something that we need to share more. With our communications to the broader community, what we want to focus on, on, focus on is the communications we have now, we want to look at and evaluate and make sure that all the messages that we have are clear, consistent, comprehensive, so that there, there's a broad message. So, and, it, and consistency means also to have a message that can be consistent amongst social media networks, amongst our conscious connection amongst meeting people that you're talking to. It's, it's like our vision statement and our mission statement combined in everything that we do. And we want it to be a, a congruent message and cohesive along all those mediums. So where it starts is it starts with our board of, of trustees, right? They're the ones that have given us, they're going to evaluate the message that we put together and the reports that we, we design. And our new minister coming on board as the captain of our ship now um, I'm so excited. He's going to have a message that's going to be amazing for us into the future. Um, our chaplains that hold the sacred space, and, and, they, and it's just amazing how they help us so much. The programs that we have, that people are coming here to experience. Um, I've, I enjoy it so much. It's like, this is a family, and to be able to share that with others in the world that, that might not ex have experienced it. It's that unity experience that we all get when we come here, whether it's taking a class, whether it's coming to service. Um, those are the things, watching online. If you've ever watched our YouTube clips or our YouTube services, it's another way to get the message out and we wanna make that all congruent. You know, our, our spiritual, uh, it just all these things, don't click again. <laughs> So, so what I wanted to do today is, because we all are a light that's shining in our own communities, wherever it is, um, each and every one of us are, are doing it somewhere in your world, you're sharing. And what I'd like to do is if we could just settle ourselves down, maybe take everything off your laps, and just give us a minute to go within to experience where we are shining a light right now. Currently, we all are doing it, and I really feel that we can experience it more. Some of us do it unconsciously, and to be able to do it consciously more and to realize where we are doing that. So sit and go in and find out where are you handing, where are you sharing that light? And then look at yourself and say, hey, how can I magnify that light? How can we become even brighter? And whatever comes forth to you, I want you to think about and say, wow, is it sharing in my office? Is it experiencing it more with my friends? Is it giving something back to your community, to unity? Is it being able to um, connect to another sacred service team possibly. Being a part-time help at the church might be something of interest. And I ask you to, to think about that for just another moment or two. Now, as you gently come back from your inquiry, I want to welcome you back. The message in the light, 
should be coming through you when you go into prayer and go into the silence. And I'm here just as a little reminder. Um, my experience of unity on the river is that when we walk in every single Sunday, when I come through those doors with the tire tracks of what's happened to me during the week, that I am lifted and illuminated, that I'm touched by the service, I'm touched by the music, I'm touched by the messages, I am touched by the faces, especially as I look around when we're standing and singing together. And each one of you is throwing that light, and then we get put back out into the world, and it starts wearing on us again. And so I've experienced um, a stolen identity in my life, and we hear a lot about that now in technology, but I've had an experience of stolen identity. And so what I have found is that the joy and the peace and the illumination and the return to groundedness usually comes when I step up and step out in some way for somebody else. And we know that it's difficult to fit things into our schedules here at Unity and that it's hard to find time. But the message really is, you know, can you make time? because you'll never find the time. You're going to have to make a decision to make time. And so I want to ask you to consider our new program. Wait a minute, I'm getting a message. <laughs> yeah, I'll tell them. No, I'll, um, I'm going to tell them. No. All right, uh, and I'll tell them again, yeah. Okay, all right. So I'm back. What Spirit said was, oh, by the way, when you walk through the doors, this is a sacred production of heaven on earth. And behind the scenes, like behind the curtain of the Wizard of Oz, there are like 50, 60, 70 volunteers every single week that make this all happen. And you walk through the door and sit in a beautiful, comfortable seat and open the program and the music comes up and you get taken to heaven. You get your message, you get regenerated, you go out into the world happy, forgiving, loving, and open. And in order for this production to take place, or any of our productions to take place, I want to invite you to join me in a brand new initiative. And it's called Angels on Call. And that's why I have these little wings on. Um, and the Angels on Call is like a temporary spiritual service. It's a temp service. And so if you can't, this is what I'm here for. I'm the agent for the new temp service. And so if you can't sign up full time for a committee or a program or make that commitment or other things are pulling at you, I just want to ask you to drop your contact information into my vessel that will be in hospitality. And what that means is you'll get a call once in a while and you may or may not be available. But what will happen is the call will come and someone, one of our great planners will say, I need help. We're in the weeds. Could you put in two hours at the desk at this event taking tickets and money? Or might you be able to stay for an extra hour after the gala to help us with cleanup? So it's a temp service, and it's a call to you to shine your light with unity and broaden the beacon because the more angels, the more light, and the more light, the broader the reach of light. So if you'll throw your halos in the ring with me, it's not a full-time commitment, and just step up to Angels on Call and support this beautiful new initiative. Questions, comments. You can obviously see the power of light and why in that vision statement for 2020, one of the intentions is that we wanna be a beacon of light throughout New England. Looking further than that, through the region, through the state, through the country. So just one more thing, if you're wondering what you can do right now, this very minute, and you came out of your meditation, the grandest, most generous gesture that you can make today going forward is to invite somebody here to share this experience and find their way back to heaven on earth. Thank you. I just want to say, I live with a staff member, Christina, 
And um, because of that, I know how hard the staff has been working since Shipley's retired and the board and Jackie. And I think it's time we all now step up and help. Thank you. You know, thank you for that, Mickey. And I just want to affirm and give back to you guys. The staff has been amazing, and as says the board, but so has this congregation. <clears throat> you know, everyone has stepped up. Everyone has been involved. And if you haven't, it's time to get on board because there's a lot for us to do. We're gonna be growing exponentially with our new minister. We have maintained, in fact, even grown a little bit during this time, this interim period, and the growth is going to be exponential with our new minister. We're gonna have more diversity. Isn't it awesome that our new minister is, is a black person from Barbados? Um, he's a straight guy, but that's okay. <clears throat> yeah. It's great, right, it's great. Yeah, yeah thanks, thank you for reminding me. Um, <clears throat> And uh, yeah, he's, you know, he's young, he's got a young family. And uh, so I just see all of the opportunities for us to continue to grow and we need you in your self-expression. Thank you, Jackie. And we thank you for giving us the opportunity to help the congregation. Yeah, I'd love to close with a prayer. Is it all right if I can do it? Would it be all right? As we all go out today, as we all feel how we've gotten new vibrations from the talk just today about the I am, about the vibration, about the spirit and the light that comes forth within us, and when we go out into the world, may that light shine, may it be magnified even more so that the beacon of light from Unity on the River is a mega beacon, and may we all share the love that we feel when we're here this truly is a family, a place for us to reside, for us to spend time together. Um, it is so valuable for all of us, and it's valuable for us to share this with others in the world and across our broader community. And so it is. <laughs>